Well, hello, welcome to another Nord of the Lord video tutorial series. We have the Nord Stage 3 uh, keyboard here, and it's such a robust, wonderful keyboard. Uh, we've talked about how it's like six keyboards in one because you've got three engines, an organ engine, a piano engine, and a synth engine, and both uh, a keyboard or panel A and a whole nother setup on panel B where you get all three engines again and you can layer and mix and match and split uh, A and B or combine A and B by holding down both, hold down both again to go back to A or B. So it just, it offers virtually unlimited opportunities. Well, uh, if this will be part four today, if you haven't watched parts one through three already, I highly recommend that you do because each one builds on the next. And uh, we have done a whole overview of navigating around the keyboard. We covered uh, the organ engine in part two, the piano engine in part three, and today is this bad boy, the synth engine in part four. And just by looking at it, you can tell <laughs> it's bigger than the other two engines. A whole lot going on here. And uh, just a disclaimer, we're barely going to scratch the surface of this thing. Um, it can do so much in the way of uh, sound synthesis. Um, but I'm going to kind of get right to the most relevant parts for, um, for modern worship. And what I think will be most helpful for you to know, we're not going to dive very deep with this, but just kind of Help you get the basics and so first thing is to remember you can turn on and off each engine independently so come over here to the synth engine and turn it on it's at max volume right now and it starts you off with a sine wave now um, first thing I'd like you to do and you, you should have your test program um, so make one of those all if you haven't already just find an empty or an unnamed program and use the shift and store as to give it a name. So this is test and my initials PW. Um, and I want you to start by resetting all of the synth parameters, just in case there's stuff that was already there that needs to be cleared out. And we'll probably do this a few times. Uh, don't be afraid to do this for your program. You're not gonna affect any of the other programs but it's good to just start with a total clean slate. Like if you came here and there was uh, complex stuff going on, you want to just start from scratch. You're gonna hold down the shift button and then the sound uh, initialization button. So shift, sound initialization, and then come back over to this LED screen. By the way, the synth engine has its own LED screen. That's how complex it is. But come here to the main screen Reset synth parameters to defaults, uh, choose OK. And now, um, now uh, we start from the beginning. And so when you turn the synth engine on, it starts by giving you a classic sine wave. Let's just take off all the effects. I hear some reverb on there. I just want to hear the very raw sound of a, a sine wave. It sounds kind of like a video game, right? Do you notice how there's just not much to it? That's because it is literally like the root pitch based on the sine wave, which uh, root, um, modulates at the frequency of that pitch. Well, um, all sounds and instruments um, and timbres are built off of these different waves. And so, and we're not going to go too deep with this, but you can change the waveform here. A, a triangle, that sounds even more like a video game. Saw. If I were to graph that wave, uh, put it on a, what do they call it? Not a spectrometer, but um, if you were to map out the audio wave with a saw, you'd, you'd see these ridges that 
uh, get lower and lower. It actually looks like a saw. And already we, we hear a little more depth in, in uh, the tone. Yeah, that has some pretty um, rigid cutoffs in the shape of um, the audio wave. Uh, that's the square wave. And we're, right now we're using oscillator one. You have another oscillator that you can combine with it, but we're just sticking with one oscillator. This is what uh, like an analog oscillator would actually do, but you would see the, uh, kind of like a sonar screen, you'd see the audio wave um, showing up on that. This has all been digitized. Um, you have this category of waves. You have what's called formant and all different types. You have what's called super waves. That sounds pretty good. Now that has some depth to it. And that's a, a super saw wave. That's pretty good. And then the last category are samples, okay? Now, samples are a bit different from programs. Samples are different from um, oscillators in that samples are um, recording, actual recordings of actual sounds or instruments. And those recordings have been captured and then put into here. And then um, the different keys change the pitch of that raw recording. Um, and so, and we're gonna get into that a little bit more, a little bit later. That's a sample as opposed to um, building waves on top of each other to synthesize your own sound from scratch. Now it would take a few hours long video to really teach you how to do that. And I don't really know that too well anyway. And so what I'm gonna bring you to are the synth presets because the synth presets do all of that heavy lifting for you. They've already got, Nord has gone through and mix and match um, these different types of waves and samples together with certain effects to give you these presets. And they are really good. And so the first one, up. let's see, I'll go back to the very first one. Okay, the very first one is the soft pad. Um, so you see here, it's a combination of two different, uh, of the oscillator one, the classic sine wave, and it's been detuned a little bit and Instead of you having to figure out how to do that, just use the preset. It sounds really good. It's a nice uh, synth pad. I use that one quite a bit, soft pad one. I use these first four a lot, soft pad two. Has a little more oomph to it. I like soft pad two a lot. Warm pad one is good. Warm pad two. That one takes a little while to kind of um, come into it. It has a, a slower attack. Nice and warm. Just like it says, warm pad too. Uh, and there are hundreds of these. And so just use these presets and experiment and listen to all the different options that you have. You want to hear, listen to what might sound good in combination with maybe a piano. Uh, and it all depends on uh, the moment that we're trying to create and worship. But there are a lot of them. And eventually we get to, out of the pads and we start seeing other things. Oh, that's still kind of a pad. Let's see, uh, there'll be uh, some bass, uh, synth basses. So a bunch of synth basses that you can try out. A lot of fun ones. That's something that if you want to experiment with, you could do a split and put that uh, just in the lowest octave here. work with your uh, music director and bass player to see if it makes sense for you to cover 
um, a synth bass part. Um, so that's fun. And then you have uh, a little further down, you have brass type stuff and leads. Now we're into the leads, I think. Yep. You see this P stick over here that uh, bends the pitch? I use it sometimes on synth leads. And so the way that you would um, activate that is, oh, I see that it, uh, the synth by default has the P stick uh, and the sustain pedal activated. And so here's what it sounds like. Sometimes you'll kind of wiggle it to get uh, some vibrato. X, kind of like a whammy bar, would be on an electric guitar. Uh, more synth presets. I don't know. There are a bunch. All these lead. And then more brass. Saw waves. Oh, that's nice. Something like that, it sounds really good with the frequency sweep right here. But even better than trying to grab this knob in the middle of the song is um, attach this to the mod wheel. And the way that you do it is pick a starting point Maybe right there, and an end point, probably full all the way out. I'm going to start at three, and now I'm going to hold down, and under this Morpha sign, hold down the wheel, and while I hold down the wheel, I'm going to move. I can't do this with just one hand, so bear with me. Um, so while holding down the wheel button, you'll come over here and move the frequency knob to the end point, which is up here. And then you can release the wheel button. And now this wheel will do what the frequency knob used to do. Now uh, the mod wheel can do. I use that a lot. Okay. So yes, these synth presets, uh, it's kind of like 90% of what I do with the synth engine is I just find the, the synth preset that I want and, um, and add it in. Okay, now there are a lot of, um, you can add effects to it. There are a lot of fun effects to put on. Like let's just uh, pick the super saw wave. Put some reverb on there, turn on reverb. It just gives it more depth and kind of helps it like ring out at the end. And um, let's put like a tremolo, like a pulsating type of effect on it. Um, so to do that, uh, I'm gonna use this first effect column. It starts on piano, double click it to advance it to synth. And I mean, there are all kinds of fun effects. Just cycle through these. That one's weird. It's kind of fun. I think tremolo is a really good uh, go-to. And if you have your master clock on a certain tempo, like um, right now, mine's at 80 beats per minute. If you want to uh, tie that tremolo effect to that tempo, then remember you'll uh, hold down the shift button and you'll rotate this knob a little bit until the master clock lights up. Oops. I'm on the wrong thing. Sorry, it's right. Here, okay, hold down shift. Effect one, master clock is now lit up. And now um, the tremolo is gonna 
be attached to the 80 beats per minute, which the ma master clock has designated. And then you can change the subdivisions, eighth notes, 16th, 16th notes, right there, sounds good. Oh, that sounds so good. Let's do a fun thing and let's, um, I use this on Raise a Hallelujah and a f actually a few um, few other songs that we do, like, um, ah, what, what's it called? Man, I can't remember right now, but uh, where uh, I'll tie the amount of the tremolo effect to the mod wheel and then I can use the mod wheel to kind of bring that pulse uh, in and out. And so... We'll just start at zero for the amount. And while I hold down the wheel button, I move the amount knob up pretty high and then release the wheel button. And the light tells you that it's on. And now, So cool. So as you bring the wheel up, up and down, you're bringing in that pulsating effect, that tremolo effect more or, or less. Okay, so those are some things about synth presets. Now, uh, what we're gonna do here is we're going to clear all of this out. Um, and so by to do that, hold down shift and sound initialization asks you if you want to reset say okay okay and i want to show you samples so remember we've got classic waves wave format super although you're pretty much not going to do much with any of those four because just use presets and presets kind of mix and match all of these oscillators and samples together to give you the finished product sound, but sometimes you want a sample, which is the fifth category. These are actual recordings of uh, actual instruments. And now you're gonna use this list button to listen to all these raw samples, like it starts with orchestra. Do you hear how it doesn't quite sound like a real instrument right now? Because there's no, um, there's no sustain to it. It is literally the raw um, recording wave, the audio wave uh, of an actual recording of an orchestra strings. Um, but you can take a tour of all the different options. There are a ton of like orchestra, like plucking strings. clarinets, oboes. They all sound really good, I think. Horns. Trumpets, trombones, brass. And all kinds of other stuff. Flutes, bassoon, clarinet. That sounds really good. Horns, saxophone. <laughs> more trombones uh, guitars harmonica oh no doesn't sound like a harmonica I'm not sure what that is Ukrainian bandura that sounds kind of like a hammer dulcimer to me um, anyway um Let's see if I can find Glockenspiel 1 and 2. I think it's number 2 that I like. Oh, yeah. I like Glockenspiel 2, sample 169. I think it uh, sounds really good. And I actually use this in a fair amount of songs, like the song So Will I. There's uh, kind of a Glockenspiel part. Now, we're going to work with this because right now it just doesn't really sound like you're hitting an actual glockenspiel because there's no um, attack, decay, and release. So we need to set those three parameters. 
and you'll find it right um, over here, kind of on the right side of your synth engine, attack, decay, release. And it, so attack is the initial making the sound, how long it takes to, for the sound to start. And so if you have a fast attack, it'd be that. If you have a very slow attack, it takes a long time to get started. Now, with, so with most instruments, you want a, a faster attack. And so I'm going to have it pretty much at zero. Okay, sounds like you're actually hitting the, the bell. And then the decay is af if you keep the note depressed, kind of how long it takes for the tone uh, to decay to nothing. So that, that's actually pretty good. That's a decay right at about uh, four. If you give it a lot, it'll take longer. Um, so yeah, somewhere around four or five. And then the release is after you release the note, um, how much longer the note reverberates. You definitely want some release. Ah, there we go. There's a lot. And it's gonna bleed a lot. So there's no um, right or wrong to this, it's whatever your ear. I like that. Actually, I had, I had my effects on. You should probably do it without the effects first. So get that uh, attack, decay, and release uh, where you want it. Okay, and then add some reverb if you want. Oh, that sounds really good. Okay, I like what I've done. I'm gonna save that. So store, store again. So there's Glockenspiel 2. And uh, what what I think is a lot of fun is to combine, you know, um, a sample like a Glockenspiel with maybe a piano. Um, so I'm gonna turn on the piano engine and just use the Royal Grand. Both the piano and the Glockenspiel are playing. That sounds pretty good. Let's say that you want the Glockenspiel. Right now it sounds like maybe if it could ring out higher pitch, it might sound better with the piano at normal octave. And so on the synth engine, let's hit the octave shift up. Now the, the Glockenspiel is an octave higher. Oh, that's great. And remember, you have independent volume. So if you felt like that was too loud on the Glockenspiel, you just back off the volume. Oh. Gives us some sparkle, you know? And yeah, so um, remember you've got a panel B, and so you can have a sample on one panel, and on a different panel, you could pick uh, one of your favorite synth presets. And then if you want to play them both at the same time, uh, hold down A and B. Actually got piano in there too so now I just have glockenspiel and soft pad oh. okay so those are some of the basics two things use your synth presets and let uh, this engine do the heavy work, uh, heavy lifting for you, and, uh, or use samples. And if you pick a sample you, you like, you need to add the right amount of attack, decay, release, and probably some reverb uh, to make it sound a little more authentic, okay? Uh, combine all of that with uh, the other two engines in here just, you're up and rocking, and you can cover just about any sound uh, that any sound that you dream up. You you you. Can
can pretty much uh, synthesize that uh, on this keyboard. All right, I really enjoyed that. I hope you did too. And stay tuned for next part where we put it all together.